Welcome to another Montmartre art lesson. Today we'll be creating this lovely field of flowers and I think this would be a fantastic painting to put on a wall that had no window. We'll be creating this painting with dimension paint and a palette knife so we'll get lots of texture. So let's get into it. Of course we first need to lay down some rough marks in which to give some guidance as to where to lay our clouds. Print out the accompanying PDF for reference here. That can be found at Montmartre TV. As there is quite a few colours to be used, I'm going to use a Montmartre tear-off disposable palette. The first step is to paint in the glade of trees across the horizon. This colour can be created by mixing emerald green and medium yellow in equal proportions. This is a number 4 Montmartre palette knife and is the finest in the range. It'll, I'll be using it for the entire painting. Now let's create the sky. I want the sky to be dark moving to light across the canvas. So I squeeze out some phthalo blue, cobalt and cerulean. I lay the phthalo in the right hand corner and blend it into the cobalt up to the first bank of clouds. Use the palette knife for this and the effect you get from blending colours with a palette knife is a really unique one and cannot be emulated any other way. And I think the trick here is to not over mix. Start the colour at the next cloud bank under the first. Use the edge of the palette knife to apply the colour. When you do apply the paint, try to lay a consistently thick coat over the surface. This just makes it easier to blend and you get a nicer texture. Once the block has been laid in across, wipe the knife and lay some pure titanium across the top of that cloud bank. I have also added some natural tint grey into the white as well. This will help create that feeling of an ominous sky moving to calm. The third bank of clouds is just pure monastral cerulean at the base with just a little hint of phthalo at the top. The fourth bank of clouds is a blue of cerulean and titanium white mixed in equal proportions. The fifth cloud bank is titanium white and cerulean but with even more of the titanium white added. For the lowest bank of clouds I add even more white so the blue is almost pastel in hue. Well, I absolutely love the way this is coming along and I love the texture that one gains from applying paint with a palette knife. So I'm going to warm things up and put a little bit of a sunset in pink and yellow that I'll mix from permanent red, titanium white and some medium yellow. So let's get this paint on. As I said, this is just medium yellow and titanium white. I add more white at the top and roughly blend them. I then add a little more of my mix below the final bank and lay this up against the green tree line. I then make a pink and apply it into that final bank. Well, that sky looks great. It's actually very interesting to look at. Now, let's work on this foreground. Now, I'd like this to be fairly dark down the bottom, moving up to a lighter green. But, I want to create my foreground so it looks closer. And I'm going to lay a dark colour down and then scratch into it to create even more texture because that's the whole theme of this piece. So let's lay on some of this dark green. And I'm doing that obviously directly onto the canvas. I'm using a 75mm Taclon brush to lay that on. This is pure hooker's green and it's really just an underpainting so its application is not too crucial. Just make sure there is no white showing at the bottom. Once you have the colour on, smooth out any bristle marks so it's nice and smooth. Keep a fairly dry brush for this and let that dry. 
For the foreground, I create a green from medium yellow, hooker's green and emerald green in equal proportions and thickly lay it on with the broad side of my knife. The thing to remember here is to hold the knife flat and work from your right to left. And if you must wear a beret, make sure that it is worn properly and not perched on your head like a cheap, ill-fitting B-grade movie wardrobe prop. Otherwise, you could look a bit silly. Now take the 75mm Taclon and bring the mid-green mix over the dark hooker's green. As I do this, the paint spreads quite sparsely and is patchy in areas. This is just what we want. I continue the colour down to the bottom of the canvas. Try to stretch the paint as far as it will go. Scrub it on and make sure that dark green underpainting is partially visible. Try to work quickly as the paint will dry as it is very thin. And it needs to be damp for the next stage where the palette knife tip removes it in lines. This will suggest blades of grass. Keep the scratches vertical and only scratch the bottom area of the canvas. Otherwise the illusion of perspective will be lost. This suggestion is a lot more fun than painting each blade of grass in. Plus the main part of this painting is really the flowers. So this must really just supply the interesting complex texture beneath them. Well, I think you'll agree that's a really quick and simple way to suggest grass and foreground. Now that's dry, we can apply our flowers. And this is really the main focal point of the painting. So squeeze out your chosen colors and let's create some flowers. So I'll show you how to do this. This first color is a white daisy with a touch of yellow. I call the flowers daisies but they are really just the generic flower. With the flower, I build them petal by petal, using the palette knife to apply lots of paint. This gives the flower an impasto three-dimensional look. This technique is easily facilitated with the dimension paint, as it has that thick buttery texture, not unlike that of oils. I just use the tip to model each petal, Remember to create a bit of a curve on each petal too, so the flower has life. Interesting effects can be created if partially mixed colours are applied. Once the flower is modelled to your liking, you can add the little yellow round stamen thingy. Where you position this has a bearing on how the flower sits. Then add another. Vary the position of the stamen and petals to create some natural variation. You will be surprised at how quick you get with the flowers once you get going. They're fun to do and you just build as you go. Remember to vary the size. And adjust the colour by adding paint into the existing wet paint. Before you know it, the field will grow before your very eyes. Well, that's our white cream flowers laid in. I think there's enough of them. And in regards to composition, these white cream flowers will really dictate where we lay the rest of the flowers. So that's the hard part done, really. I'm going to lay in some red daisies next, and I think they'll really make an impact against that green. Just follow the same steps that were taken to produce the white flowers. Remember to place the stamen in as well. I don't think there is a daisy like this that is this colour, but how good does it look on that green? Drop the white into the red, it creates a really interesting look. I have also placed a few of the flowers above the horizon line, because that's how they grow. This adds real interest as well. starting to look really good huh well let's get really crazy and add some violet I think you get the picture here I don't need to waffle on about flowers anymore incidentally this canvas is quite large of course you could do a smaller one if you liked or a bigger one too now I add some cerulean flowers 
I have added a little white to the cerulean, so they're a little bit pastel too. And I put these wherever I can. I think the artist knows when to stop in most cases. I can almost feel that warm breeze and smell that lovely fresh air. Well, not really, but I do like the way it's starting to take shape and it is genuinely evoking a pleasant feeling. So let's lay the rest of these cerulean flowers in and we can start the final step. So this final step is to create our stems and this will ground our flowers so they don't look like they're floating in midair. This colour can be created with hooker's green, emerald green, phthalo blue and medium yellow. Now the best way to create a nice thin mark is actually with a flat angle brush used lightly on its side. It holds a lot of paint and you have a fair bit of control. So let's get these stems on. Onto my palette I have squeezed out some hooker's green, emerald green, phthalo and medium yellow. With these colours I can create a variation of different greens for the stems. This part is self-explanatory and really ties everything together. Just remember to apply your paint with a very light touch. Once you have those flowers above the horizon done, add some stems into the foreground flowers as well. I really hope that you enjoyed that lesson and I hope that it stirred up some inspiration inside you. If you did like this and you're not there now, then come over to www.montmart.net because we've got lots more fantastic lessons and we've also got our Facebook page there for you to join if you like. And once you're on our web page, Maybe you'd like to join our family feed and if you subscribe to that, well, then you get a new fun family project sent to you each week as well as lots of other goodies. So thanks very much for joining us. Stay tuned and remember to keep on painting. See you next time!